Hey guys, so I recorded all the pieces for this uh, YouTube video and mysteriously it sounds all glitchy and messed up. So I apologize for that, but um, I just wanted to give you a fair warning. It's not like a loading issue on the on your video. It's just some sort of recording issue that made it sound laggy. So uh, I'm sorry about how it sounds, but please continue to watch. What up, homies? Today I'm catching the world by surprise and releasing two videos in a single Wednesday rather than one. This will be a pair of chess videos, and you're currently watching the first one. The link to the second video should be in the description, so be sure to take a look at that one as well. In this first video, I'm basically going to give an overview of how each of the chess pieces move, and I'm going to explain them not in order of how valuable they are, but in order of how easy it is to understand that piece's movement. I will still share the value of each piece, however, but it isn't really the focus of the video. In the second video, I will be explaining how to set up the board, as well as two special moves which only occur in specific situations. The first of these two moves is en passant, which is French for in passing, and the second move is called castling. If you're specifically interested in learning about those two moves, you already feel comfortable with how these pieces move and how they relate to each other in terms of value, anything like that, please feel free to skip to the second video now. So the first thing I'm going to do is briefly explain the value of the pieces. After that, I'll show how each piece moves, starting with the rook, also known as a castle, then the bishop, then the queen, king, the knight or horse, and finally the pawn. If you're looking for a specific, specific section of the video, <laughs> please check the description for timestamps of when each section starts. So you can see here that I've placed one of each white piece on the board, and above them I have placed a number of black pawns. This shows how valuable each piece is. If it has three pawns above it, it is worth three pawns. So starting in the bottom left, you can see that there is one pawn above the white pawn, and this is self-explanatory. A pawn is worth one pawn, right? But the knight and bishop each have three pawns above them, and that is because they're considered to be worth three pawns each. Each player has two knights and two bishops um, at the start of the match. Near the end of the game, some people consider the bishops to be more valuable than the knight, but technically speaking, both are worth three pawns. Then you have the rook, which is worth five pawns, and the queen, which is worth nine pawns, which is almost two rooks in value. Okay, and then in the bottom right and the top left, you can see the kings, and they don't have any pawns around them because it's kind of impossible to classify their value because if your king is taken, you lose the game. However, some people would argue that in terms of strength, the king is slightly stronger near the end game than a knight, which would put it at a value of around 3.1 pawns. So as I said earlier, I'm not going to go through the pieces in order of value like most videos do, but rather I'm going to explain the pieces from easiest to hardest to understand, starting with the rook. The rook can move in straight lines as far as he wants, as long as nothing is in the way. And as is the case with all pieces, the rook can also capture opposite colored pieces by moving onto their square. So you can see here that there are these green um, dots on a bunch of squares. Those are all the squares that the rook can move to. And each piece that I use is going to have those dots. And then around this black pawn here, rather than those four, or rather than a green dot, you see those green corners, which means you can take that piece like so. Next up is the bishop. This piece is pretty simple to understand as well. The main difference is that rather than moving in straight lines like the rook, it moves in diagonal lines like like a crooked rook. <laughs> so it can move down to this corner, up to its pawn, but not touching it because it's in the way. Can't take its own piece. Can move up on that direction, and it can take this pawn here. Oops, like so. The queen is the strongest piece on the board and functions like a rook and a bishop in one. As you can see from the green dots, she can move in any direction as far as she wants, as long as nothing is in the way. So, well, there's quite a few different directions to go here, and she can also take this pawn or this pawn. And just like all the other pieces, she cannot go past her own piece. They're in the way. The king moves just like the queen, except if she was really sleepy. He can move in any direction, but only one space at a time. So, uh, just like the queen, he could take this pawn or this pawn, but if this pawn was over here, he can't reach it in one move. Okay, so this is where things get a bit more complicated. For starters, the knight is the only piece that can jump. There is no blocking a knight, because it will just leap over the blocker, who suddenly looks very ashamed of themselves for trying. 
Furthermore, the knight moves in L shapes, which can be confusing for new players because it's kind of counterintuitive. To figure out where a knight can jump to, draw a straight line two spaces away, one, two, and then a space to either side of that. This is where a knight can go. So the reason it can't go here is because there's a pawn in the way of the same color, but it can go here and take that pawn. Now if the black player does that, see all the places that the knight can go now? It can go back into the center. It could go here, 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 or here. We'll say that. And now it can take any of these three pawns again. Lastly is the pawn, and admittedly, lastly is the pawn, and admittedly, it is up for debate whether this is more or less complicated than the knight. But I wanted to save these little guys for last. Each player starts with eight pawns in a row, like so. Pawns move in straight lines, and they only go forward towards the other team's pieces, as you can see from the green dots. If a pawn has not yet moved, it can go two spaces forward at once, like so. I'm just going to have this one go forward one. Here's the thing, though. After a pawn has moved, it can only ever move one space at a time, even if it used that first move to go just one space. See? So they can only ever move two spaces if they have not yet moved. Also, pawns do not capture pieces by moving forward. So this pawn cannot capture this pawn, even though that's how they move. Confusingly, um, pawns are the only piece that captures in a different direction than it moves, because they capture one space diagonally in front of them. So, hold on, let me just make... Okay, so this pawn could capture this pawn or this pawn, but it cannot capture the pawn directly in front of it, even though usually they move in straight lines. See? So that's kind of confusing. <laughs> um, lastly, if a pawn gets all the way to the other side of the board, um, which I'll just show you right now, it can turn into any piece, any of these four pieces. So you could turn it into another bishop, another rook, a knight, or even another queen, which means hypothetically, since each player starts with a queen and they have eight pawns, you could end up with nine queens on the board at the same time. Right, and that covers all of the basic moves in chess, how each of the pieces moves under normal circumstances. And uh, here on the board, you can see that this is how the pieces would usually be set up if you're going to play a game. But I will discuss this more in the next video, so thank you for watching this one, and leave a comment. I would like to hear what your favorite piece is. Mine is the... well, if I couldn't choose the queen, my favorite piece would be the knight. Knights are pretty interesting. And uh, yeah.